Today, it is hardly possible to find an untrodden path or an unknown road on Earth. The Ustur Plateau in Central Asia, one of the wildest and least accessible regions on the planet, has for a long time remained terra incognita on the map of the world. A flat plain with sparse vegetation and tiny saltwater lakes. With piercing frost in the winter, and a burning sun drying up the soil and turning this vast territory into endless desert with fabulous mirages on the horizon in summer. And the wind, a constant, unrelenting wind. Once there was a sea, now its shores are long gone. It is somewhere there, beyond the horizon, almost a mirage. Escarpments of limestone and chalk edges of the plateau are what remains under the burning sun, making the land look like a fantastic world from a different reality. There one can feel the breath of eternity. Ustürt is my home, my native land. There is a legend about the region. If a bird flew across the area, it would burn its wings. If a human worked it, he would burn his feet. But perhaps it is this inaccessibility of the region that has preserved its unique and diverse animal and plant world. In spring the plateau is particularly beautiful, when in a couple of days it becomes covered with a solid carpet of herbs and ephemeral flowers as far as the eye can see. This continues for only a few days, after which the heat sets in. The Ustur Plateau is actually a unique natural reserve. There are over 250 species of vertebrates alone. There are numerous colonies of gerbils, ground squirrels and jebawars. Birds of prey make their nests on the rocks of the escarpment. The Hubara bastard has made the vast tap its home. The plateau's flora numbers about 700 species of plants, among which are rare and endemic species. The image of Saiga, a beautiful nomadic dweller of a stud, played its part in local culture and history. Traditional poems, Dastan, talk about Saigas that would save a hero's life by feeding him with their milk. The Saiga can be seen as a symbol of the region, one of a beauty and grace. Saving Saigas from extinction must become a measure of consciousness and a test of humanity for all of us. In late autumn, usually in November, saigas come to our part of his With the coming of cold weather, they enter the rutting period. And in spring, their calves are born. Only in late spring, in the second half of May, they leave for Kazakhstan and their summer pastures. For thousands of years, people used the biological resources provided by the Ustur Plateau. For thousands of years, people hunted saigas. However, the hunting was sustainable, with only a small percentage of the migrating population being taken. In the 1970s, during an aerial survey of the Ustur Plateau, scientists discovered strange constructions, which proved to be remains of Iran's, which formed a gigantic system of traps developed by ancient Turkic peoples. The length of one of such systems could reach tens of kilometers, since from the air its fragments resembled mysterious arrows pointing somewhere to the center of the desert. It is impossible to see these signs from the ground. 
their relief is smooth and their limits go beyond the horizon. Tens of similar arrow-shaped constructions have been discovered on the Ustur Plateau. Scientists determined that these huge constructions were hunting traps used to catch ungulates that roamed the area in vast quantities. The group of Irans, situated in the southeast of the Usur Plateau, is the most extensive and consists of the largest number of traps. It is located on the seasonal migration route of saigas and wild asses, which used to form large herds at that time. The Irans consisted of a bank of earth about three meters high and four meters wide, with a broad but shallow ditch running on the inner side. The bank was supported by a wall made of fragments of limestone. The ditch was about seven meters wide and up to half a meter deep. The bank and the ditch formed a bag with a broad funnel-shaped mouth up to 100 meters in width. In the corners of the arrows there were traps, pits more than one meter deep with sheer walls. Once built, using the runs in the northeast of Ustur for hunting didn't require much effort on the part of the hunters. The migrating animals would be funneled along the ditches and become trapped in the pits. The hunters had only to pick the fruits of their labor. One such trap could catch tens of thousands of cygars. For many centuries, the Ustur Plateau was a place where civilizations met. Ancient caravan routes crossed the plateau. Ustur bears traces of different peoples living there, such as the Turkic, Mongol, and Scythian tribes, as well as the nations that had inhabited the plateau long before. Sol. According to historical sources, the caravans used to meet Saiga herds in this section of the Great Silk Road. Sometimes the Saiga even followed the caravans, as caravan roads often went along the animals' migration routes. It means our ancestors were wise in dealing with the nature. They did not destroy the wildlife carelessly, but considered the Saigars as their guides and creatures that truly adorned the Great Steepy. In ancient times, caravans often followed animals' migration routes. Caravans' arrives were built at a distance of one day travel by camel from each other. The Beleuli caravans' arrives stands apart from this system of caravans' arrives. A system of cisterns for keeping water, or sardova, was constructed around the caravanserai. These sardovas collected water during the rainy seasons in autumn and spring. This is a good example from our past, which is very apt in modern times, and demonstrates how important it is to conserve the natural riches we have, and to use them very carefully. So why has the Saiga population decreased so heavily, particularly in recent years? We know that in the 17th, 18th century, merchants from Bukhara and Kiva would supply 300,000 pairs of Saiga horns annually to the Chinese market, which, however, did not reduce the number of Saigas on the Stuart Plateau. Between 60s and 80s, saigas were being killed on an industrial scale. It was called scheduled killing. Depending on the population from 2,000 to 25,000 animals were killed annually. 
However, this still wasn't the reason for the catastrophic impact on cyber numbers. In the breakup of the Soviet Union and ensuing socio-economic crisis of the early 90s, cyber hunting became almost uncontrollable. The animals were killed mostly for their valuable hunts. Other state borders that were formed between the new countries after the breakup of the Soviet Union became the second reason for the Saiga's terrible situation. Many kilometers of barbed wire cut off the Saiga's traditional migration routes. The Saiga became a transboundary species inhabiting the territories of four countries. According to zoologists, the economic development of the region unfortunately caused a further reduction of the number of wild animals and degradation of habitats. Numerous artificial obstacles, such as railways, highways, pipelines, canals and aqueducts obstructed Saiga's migration routes. Saiga's have been recorded to die, having been run over by vehicles. The development of the economic infrastructure without taking into account aspects of saiga migrations has brought about a considerable loss of the animal's habitat. In the early 20th century, the migrating saigas numbered about one million. By the end of the century, the population had reduced manifold. The Ustur saiga population is in the most critical position of all the five saiga populations worldwide. It is a transboundary population migrating between Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan and has decreased by 99% during last 25 years. This ancient species, which is very important for maintaining the balance of the ecosystem on the Ustur Plateau, is on the brink of extinction in Uzbekistan. The saiga makes an impact on the quality of the Ustur vegetation, the population of predators on the plateau, and so on. It is a pyramid collapsing just because only one species, the saiga, is vanishing from the wild. You need not to live permanently on this land to feel how this vast area is fading year after year, becoming more and more lifeless. Now the boundary between life and death is visible and tangible. These plastic bags littering the Ustut Plateau, once an inaccessible steepy, look like white flags displayed by consumer civilization. In former times, we were often told about the victory of man over nature, but nature cannot be beaten. This battle cannot have winners. The Russian word for victory, by the other, derives from a combination of words poslibedi, which means after a catastrophe. Carelessly interfering in natural processes, man harms only himself. If today you ask a child living in a steppe village if they have ever seen a saiga, their answer would most probably be no. Only some of the children know saigas from pictures and books, or from stories told by old people who remember the times when herds of these migrating animals walked through their villages. I remember the time when saigas used to enter our village in the coldest winters. We allowed them to join our cattle and fed them until the frost weakened. Nobody had any intention at all to kill them. Then we let the animals out into the steppe and they went to their pastures. I was a little boy then. I saw how saigas went by. They were not afraid of us. When we worked on the eastern escarpment of the Ustur Plateau, every autumn we saw enormous saiga herds consisting of thousands of animals move from their summer pastures to the places they overwintered. Saigas used to come to the Salanchak salt marsh, which only a short time ago was Lake Barsakilmes. They used to pass by here and go further to the south of Ustud, where they bred on their winter pastures in natural conditions. 
They stayed close to people, as if hoping they would defend them. But now the austere children hardly ever find Saigas near their houses. Well, only at the Museum of Local History, perhaps. From the employees of the museum, the children learn that Saigas lived at the time as mammoths and that currently they are included in the Red Book as a critically endangered species. There is something terrifying about the region's ancient dwellers, which are frozen here forever. The Turan tiger, Central Asian boar, the saiga antelope. The tiger is now extinct. The saiga is on the brink of extinction. Are they destined to end up in the Nukus Museum, the last and only place where one would be able to find them? Many representatives of the plant and animal world in the Aral Sea area are critically endangered species. The saiga can easily be included in this sad list. The Red Book is not a Hall of Fame. It's not a fortunate thing at all, being included in it. It is important to make the younger generation feel the pain we suffer. How can we restore the environmental balance? What can we do to save the saigas? Meeting with children at school, we discuss these serious questions. I explain them that they, the new generation, are our only hope for the conservation of nature and therefore the salvation of our soul. The danger is that, along with the Saigas, one of the wonders of our world, the very beauty of life, life's true meaning, can abandon us. Any contribution we make to the Saigas conservation would be a struggle for an enormous and perhaps the most important part of our soul. Even the highest authorities realize the gravity of the problem. For the last five years, several bills have been approved on the improvement of the environmental situation in our country, aimed at uniting the government and wider society to conserve natural resources, including biodiversity. The flora and fauna of Uzbekistan are highly diverse. Our country is home to over 700 vertebrate species, more than 450 species of birds, several species of reptiles, and about 15,000 species of plants. Many of these species are endemic. To conserve biological diversity is a priority for us. Further expansion of protected areas is a priority. We have seven categories of conservation areas. The basic protected areas are natural reserves, wildlife sanctuaries and wildlife national parks. Conservation areas of all the categories comprise 23-24% of the country's territory. However, strictly protected conservation areas cover only 2.5% of Uzbekistan's territory. Certainly, our nature cannot be conserved without reserves, as in the latter, natural habitats are protected and the territories of the reserves must be expanded. The Saigachi Reserve is included in the list of nature conservation areas of Uzbekistan. It was established in 1991 and had an area of 1 million hectares. Its purpose was to create the conditions necessary for the conservation of the Saiga. Unfortunately, whilst the Saigachi Reserve was created, no staff were appointed to this reserve. The Karakalpa Committee for Nature Protection was appointed the task of protecting the territory. The remoteness of the reserve, as well as the low numbers of rangers, did not make it possible to take absolute control of the territory. The saiga is a migratory species, and we suggest that special conservation areas need to be created to conserve these and other unique and endemic animal and plant species. We should think how we are going to conserve not only the saigas, but the whole landscape. The natural conditions the saiga is accustomed to need to be protected. The creation of preserve for Saigas is a very good project. It will become a great achievement for our society in the conservation of nature.
The government has worked out measures to be taken in the period between 2013 and 2017 to create the Saigachi Reserve. The territory on which the reserve is to be made was revised and its boundaries were altered so as to include to the places where saigas breed. We hope that in the near future staff will be appointed to work in Saigachi and the reserve will be equipped with all that is necessary for its protection. The boundaries of the reserve have been defined. Its northern border coincides with the state border between Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. In the east, its border runs along the shoreline of the Aral Sea. In the south, the reserve stretches as far as the ruins of the Beleuli fortress. In the west, the border runs along the Jarenkuduk Salina land. The total area of the reserve amounts to 7,000 square kilometers, with the total area of the protected territory 3.5 thousand square kilometers. Six strictly protected sites are Duana, Jideili, Almambet, Churuk, Beleuli and Jarenkuduk. People that live in the territory of the newly formed reserve know that new jobs will be created and new technologies and alternative and renewable energy sources developed and introduced to ensure local people accept the reserve warmly and wholeheartedly. It is highly important that people understand one fact. It is their land, they are the masters of this land, and they can pass it to their children and grandchildren. The preservation of Saigas and our attitude towards them are measures of our environmental responsibility. To save the Saigas and restore the natural environment that we are, as the highest of beings, must tackle. Human beings must be responsible for what they do to the planet. Our good name depends on the salvation of the Saigas too. It is the last day of autumn. Today we are checking the outdoor temperature at our station. It has dropped to minus 15 degrees Celsius. While the atmospheric pressure has risen, it is already snowing on the Kazakh steppe, and the saigas will come soon. We feel it. In former times, the first herds used to arrive here earlier. I think they will come in three or four days. It is cold now. The Saigas are late. Will they ever come? How will the native land accept them? Can they breed here in their homeland? Now it does not only depend on them or us, it also depends on you. And sometimes people ask, so what's the problem? if some small creature disappears from the earth. A lot of animals, birds and plants have already become extinct, but we continue to live and nothing is happening. The sea has gone dry, but we continue to live. The tiger and cheetah have already disappeared, but we are still here. And every time I say, imagine a large house built of thousands of bricks. You pull out one brick and the house still stands. You take out another brick and start to feel something is going wrong, but you continue to live. You continue to disassemble your house. At some crucial moment, the smallest brick you pull out of the wall makes the whole structure collapse, its fragments bearing you forever. Stand up, please. The judges are coming. The prosecution is speaking. The young environmentalists in schools in Yukus are staging a play where they try man for his attitude to nature. They act on behalf of the sun, earth, water, atmosphere, Aral Sea, Saiga. These entities are testifying against the man, accusing him of killing animals and plants. 
And the sentence is, man, you have done much harm to nature. You must protect her, make friends with her and keep her safe. Perhaps these lessons will teach children kindness and responsibility, and they will treat the nature of their native land with love and care. The next generation is developing mindset of a defender of their homeland. Who loves Saigas? Ты красотой своей наш разум укрепи. Пусть через сотни тысяч долгих лет хранит тебя от овна амулет. Такой же древний, как и наш народ, Сайгак, как друг, как брат вошел в наш род. Его таинственные чудные глаза Глядят на нас, как Божие образа. Такой же древний, как и наш народ. Сайгак, как друг, как брат вошел в наш род. Его таинственные чудные глаза 